Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and in this video I'm going to explain how you can breed a dog like this or this and by the way this dog on the left picture and this dog on the right picture is the same breed, pure breed, but the appearance is strikingly different and some people even think that this is Photoshop, but believe me this is not a Photoshop, this is real dogs and today I'm going to explain how you can breed a dog like this. I cannot do it under a couple minutes, but I believe I can do it under 20 minutes and you don't have to be a genetic engineer in order to do this. Anyone who is 10 years old and older can do it. And in just few minutes, I'm going to explain how to do it. And this mutation is due to mutation in the single gene. So let me give you just a little bit of scientific background. Here is a gene which we call myostatin. So this is going to be exon number one and then goes intron number one and then go again exon number two, intron number two and exon number three. And we are interested in exons, so number one, two and three because when messenger RNA would be made, this introns would be cut away and the final form of the messenger RNA would contain only these three fragments, fragment number one, two and three. And we call such process transcription and through the process of translation, this messenger RNA would be translated into the protein. So let's say this is going to be a protein. So double-stranded DNA, so this is DNA, would be transcribed into the messenger RNA, so mRNA, and then messenger RNA would be translated into the protein, so protein. But my statin gene in this dog is mutated and has a mutation in the exon number three. Uh, we call this frame shift mutation where two nucleotides are deleted and this causes a stop codon much earlier than in normal gene. This means that shorter version of the messenger RNA would be made and shorter version of the protein is going to be made. And such short version of this protein is going to be not fully functional. So normal gene would produce normal protein and we call a version of the gene allele. So genotype for this gene, for example, of this dog, which is normal, would be capital A and capital A. And for this dog, it's going to be homozygous recessive condition, small a, small a. One more time, this is the same breed. This is whippet and this is whippet. And what about this dog? This dog is heterozygous, so her genotype is capital A and small a, and this dog here is homozygous recessive, so it has two recessive alleles, two mutated alleles. As you see, heterozygous dog is also looks stronger than normal, but again, this is pure breed, and this is pure breed, and this is also pure breed. The only difference is going to be in single gene. Such a mutation happens not only in the dogs, but also in the cattle. But in dogs, this mutation is known to happen in this breed, whippet. So your first step would be to find an owner of such a dog who has this mutation in double form. So would be homozygous recessive. And this is going to be your first step. And now let's say you find such a dog. The sex of the dog is not important, but it would be much more convenient if this is going to be a stud. In this case, you can bring two bitches with you. And I will explain why two and not one. Actually, the more bitches you bring, the better. But in order to save a space, I'm just going to use this example with one stud and two bitches. So this is going to be a stud and this is going to be 
a bitch and this is also going to be a bitch. And genotype for this gene is going to be capital A, capital A here, capital A, capital A here, and small a, small a here. Now you made them, so first with this bitch, and you're going to get a certain progeny. And the progeny is going to be females and male progeny. So puppets are going to be of the two sexes. And you also mate with this bitch. And again, in your litter, you're going to get puppets of both sexes. Again, uh, a litter can be much bigger than just four animals. It can be up to six, seven, eight puppets. I'm just using four for each litter in order to save a space. Now let's think what is the genotype are going to be of these puppets from the point of view of the myostatin gene. And this bitch for this uh, gene only can give dominant allele. So every puppet here is going to have from the mother side dominant allele. It doesn't matter whether it's going to be this one or this one. Both of them are just dominant alleles. And the same is true for this mother. She only can give dominant allele A to her progeny. So all the progeny are going to get dominant allele A from the mother side. But take a look from the father side, all these puppets only can get this recessive allele. Now we know that all the puppets are going to be 100% in both litters heterozygous. And what you can say about the breed of these puppets? It's going to be 50% genotype receiving from the whippet and 50% from the American Bulldog. So this is going to be hybrids. And also here, 100% of the progeny is going to be hybrids. 50% of the genes they are going to get from the mother side and another 50% of the genes are going to get from the father side. And the same is true here, 50% of the genetic makeup would be from the mother side and 50% of the genetic makeup would be from the father side. But you of course want to get American Bulldog with this distinctive characteristic of the whippet and not the hybrid. And also you want to have this mutation in homozygous recessive form and not in heterozygous. So what is the next step is going to be? You will cross these animals, for example, this beach and this stud. And this stud and this beach, this beach and this stud, and this stud and this beach. Some of you may ask why we cannot mate, for example, this male and this female from the same litter. We don't want to get a genetic depression. We don't want inbreeding. So that's why we breed these animals that still has uh, a father which is going to be the same for both litters. These puppets from both litters are going to be half cousins and they are going to be already inbred. The relationship if in within the same litter it's going to be 50% for each animal here, but between these two litters the same genetic makeup is going to be 25%. And we are not going to increase this inbreeding, for example, by mating animals within the same litter. And some of you may say, why not, for example, use this stud and mate it with, for example, these two beaches. And the answer is going to be simple. Again, we want to keep genetic diversity as much as possible. We don't want inbreed them. Inbreeding is bad for animals. Only laboratory mice can be 100% inbred, but such animals as dogs would be affected by inbreeding depression. This generation here we call parental generation. So let's put P here. So parent one, parent two, parent three. So one, two, three. 
this generation here we call F1 generation. So let's put F1 here. Now let's take a look what's going to happen in the next generation. Again, for the simplicity, let's take, for example, this female here and this male here. So we have a mate here shown with blue color. Both animals, both parents are going to be heterozygous for this gene. So genotype is capital A, small a. And when we build simple Punnett square, we can see that in the progeny, we can find following genotypes. The first variant would be capital A, capital A. We also may see capital A, small a, capital A, small a, and small a, small a. And as you see, small a, small a genotype in which we are interested would make one quarter of all progeny. So let's take a look what's going to happen here. So this couple is going to give a progeny. And in a progeny, for example, let's again say this is going to be four puppets. And we expect that one out of four is going to be homozygous recessive. So would have genotype that is going to be small a and small a. And the rest is going to be capital A, capital A, and capital A, small a. This is going to be our expected ratios. But do not forget that this is just approximation. This is not exact numbers, not exact ratios like one quarter, one quarter, and 50%. These numbers can fluctuate. It's just a matter of chance. What about the genetic makeup of this animal? Both parents, as you remember, are hybrids. So for the rest of the genes, this animal is also going to be a hybrid. 50% of the genetic makeup is going to be a whippet and another 50% it's going to be a bulldog, American bulldog, just like both parents from the F1 generation. And by the way, this is F2 generation. In all the rest crosses, in all the rest matings, we also can get animals like this one, which is going to be uh, the animal of our interest that has two recessive alleles. And to cross even animals who is going to be homozygous recessive for the myostatin gene with other brothers and sisters doesn't make any sense. The genetic makeup is going to be the same. It's going to be a hybrid 50 to 50. And we want to get 100% American Bulldog who is going to be homozygous for the myostatin gene mutation. So our next step would be to bring for the mating a purebred American Bulldog. So let's put 100% here that this is purebred American Bulldog. Now let's mate them. So if it is a bitch, then this animal have to be a stud. And of course, it's going to have two normal alleles. So all the progeny are going to be heterozygous. Again, we can get animals of the different sex here. Let's say again, we got four puppets. From the father side, all are going to inherit dominant allele. And from the mother side, all of them are going to inherit recessive allele A. So all of them are going to be heterozygous. But what about the rest of the genes? 50% they are going to get from their father. And from the mother side, they are going to get another 50%. So 50% of this 50% and 50% of this 50%. And the genetic makeup is going to be American Bulldog 75% and 25% they are going to be whippets. Now let's, for example, also take this mating and again the progeny is going to consist of four animals. And again we are going to see 
according to the Spaniard square that one quarter of the animals going to be homozygous dominant 50% are going to be heterozygous and one quarter is going to be homozygous recessive and we are especially interested in this animal. Genetic makeup of these dogs are going to be 50% American Bulldog and another 50% Whippet. Now let's make this beach and this start and this time take a look what's going to happen to their progeny. And again we are going to get the progeny of the different sex. But this time one parent is homozygous recessive, another one is heterozygous. And we are going to expect following ratio in the progeny. So one parent is heterozygous, another homozygous recessive. And in the progeny we are going to see following ratios. So capital A small a here, small a small a here, capital A small a here and small a small a here. So 50% of the progeny is going to be homozygous recessive, another 50% is going to be heterozygous. Let's say this animal is going to be homozygous recessive, this one heterozygous, homozygous recessive and heterozygous. But what about the genetic makeup from this parent, from the mother side? They're going to get 50% of this 50% and 50% of this 50%. And from the father side, they're going to get half of this 75% and half of this 25%. So they're going to get 50% from their father side. One more time, let's write down the numbers. Half of this number, this progeny are going to get from the father side and this is 75% American Bulldog. So they are going to get half of this number which is going to be 37.5% and they are going to get from the mother side 50% of this 50% which is going to be 25. So plus 20 5% of the American Bulldog and they are also going to get 50% of this 25% which is 12.5% of the Whippet. So 12.5% and 50% of the Whippet from the mother side. So 50% of 50% is going to be 25%. I'm going to use different color in order to avoid a mess here. So plus 25% of the Whippet from the mother side. So here we have F3 generation and this is going to be F4 generation and it's going to be according to our calculations 62.5% of the American Bulldog and 375 are going to be Whippet. Now you got an idea how we are doing breeding and how we are increasing genetic makeup of the bulldog and decreasing with each generation genetic makeup of the whippet. So now you got an idea how we increase genetic makeup of the desirable breed with each generation and how we are choosing for the desirable trait. And just doing the selection work in just few generations, we are going to get a pure breed of the American Bulldog, which is going to have this mutation in homozygous form. And when we continue this selection work in just few generations, we are going to get a pure breed American Bulldog, who is going to be homozygous recessive for this mutation. And we can use any breed, I just use this American Bulldog just as example, but it can be any other breed of the similar size. I think that you still may have many questions, so please write down your questions underneath this video and I will gladly answer all your questions. This is all for today, subscribe and see you in the next video, goodbye.